Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to spend about 20 minutes introducing the requirement from the ocean science community to the uh, satellite technology or industrials. So I'm focusing on this AIS or VDES. Uh, so I'm not so familiar with the, this in progress of the VDES satellite con constellations. So I put here AIS cubic satellite. Actually, it means AIS together with v VDES. I'm talking about the requirement from the ocean viewpoint about the operational monitoring. OK, so I'm Qian Hua. And uh, this is also working together with Li Zhengda from Ministry of Transportation and Communications. OK, so um, for operational uh, observations or monitoring, we are talking about mainly focus on what is happening about the physical processes at the interface between the air and ocean. So that is what we call meteorology and oceanography monitoring. So we have the variable many, many different objectives from domestic and international. For domestic, that is something like uh, the most important to provide the real-time data for improving the quality of forecast. So this is the main purpose and the products of forecast and prediction are offered for rescues, for navigation safety, for other engineering applications, and, and so on. Okay, so these are the domestic requirement from the government public inside the nation. And for international conventions, actually we have something, a um, joint project called Global Ocean Observation System, GOOS, that's from the United Nations, which try to provide a long time, long term, real time data to facing the climate change crisis. And so uh, the concept I want to share with you today is that uh, from the perspective of, of ocean communities, the monitoring can be categorized into two different purposes. One is for research, for scientific studies. So scientific communities, professors, in, uh, they try to acquire some resources and try to do observations, aiming to resolve their own scientific issues. OK, so this kind of observation could be short, could be focused on specific topics, which is not I'm talking about today. So I'm talking about the operational, which is meaning long term. And these data should be in real time delivered to the public for any potential users. So this is for um, long term, OK, long term and in real time. And this can be further categorized as remote sensing and in situ measurement. In situ means on site which your instrument is on the water surfaces. So the remote sensing are, can be further categorized as satellite borne is that we all know we have the satellite measuring the surface wind, sea surface temperature, the ocean color, and the wave and the sea ice. Those data are provided to the public. And the other is coastal based like a in Japan or in Taiwan, we have the island round microwave radar or high frequency or VHF radar that cover uh, the area extending to the EEZ zone. And the in situ measurement are more important because these are uh, provided for calibration of the model, calibration of the remote sensing data. So the in situ measurement can be categorized as these three. So the first is called mooring. Mooring means that instrument is fixed at a certain locations. Uh, so mooring means that they, they don't drift. Okay, mooring buoys at fixed positions. And the second one is mobile. Mobile means our instrument can be transport, transported. Uh, by the ocean currents from time to time. It's called Lagrangian observations. So we have uh, drifters of flow or glider, which is 
we don't have power, but this instrument moves along with the current. The third one is from the vessel, from the ships. And this ship, they are voluntary to observe all the data they measure for this onboard instrumentation. Every ship, they equipped with wind anemometer, wind sensor, temperature barometric sensor, all these basic terms for meteorology data. So they provide this data as a voluntary. Okay, so these are the ongoing, what is the infrastructure for the current status. And we are now proposing the idea that, that remote sensing can be uh, jointly together with some in situ measurement, providing a more cost effective solutions. Okay, so these are these uh, ongoing or the pre present uh, uh, current observation infrastructures from the United Nations. We, I mentioned this uh, fixed marine and, and this mobile like uh, drifters and flows and gliders, they are marked as those dots on the global ocean. Okay, this is a special kind of projection. So this is Antarctica and this is the uh, Arctic Ocean, this is Taiwan, Japan. So when we look about the in situ measurements, which mainly the mobile fixed and ships, and this is the distribution. So we are talking about the density. The density here in Taiwan, Japan, and in the Arctic Ocean is obvious, not sufficient, it's not enough. We have very sparse area here, and these are uh, the other places. So averagely, every time, we have around 8,000 uh, instrumentations from those three, from different countries in this project. Okay, if we uh, room in, like uh, here, this is Taiwan, this square means the HF radar, a coastal site, and these are the vessel report. Okay, so they report the vessel uh, measurements to the Central Weather Bureau or to Tokyo, so the data exchange, we obtain this data. And these are the flows and drifters. Okay, so these are the conditions. These are the weather station on the ocean. If we have more of this data, we can have more accurate prediction about the weather, typhoons, hurricanes, and all the hazardous systems. Okay, so these are uh, the time scale the resolution and the water depth. So for those measurements are mostly measure what is happening on the air-sea interface. But as we know, the ocean is controlled by the salinity structures below. So here we have some other uh, instrumentation. So they provide the covered different scale in time and space. And those shipboard measurements, they can also release the balloon so we can measure the atmospheric conditions. So this is the decades for the nation, United Nations called the Decades of Ocean Science. And there they launch a project which encourage the civil uh, ships for providing their measurements on board. Okay, so this is an engagement of civil society to the ocean observation. Now it's an, a big, a huge program in the United Nations. So we are focusing on this part. So most of the area that we have nothing to measure, we have no buoys, no drifters, actually the shipboard measurement provide the most valuable data. And for the different projects, so they they launch weather balloons, they measure those things, and this is the fundamental uh, infrastructure of the GOOS. So this VOS, Voluntary Observation Ship Program, is important, but it's not running well, okay, why? Because it's so limited to the range and the cost. So the commercial ship, they want to transmit their data back so it's always limited by the distance to the coastline. So if they are transmitting using AIS system now, so they broadcast, so this is the coverage of AIS in Taiwan. Only vessels in this area, they are possible to bring their data back. So outside this, if we have something in the Northwest Pacific, in the South China Sea, no, nothing. 
but it's so important in that area. So, so what can we do with that? Is to use this ship to satellite uh, system. This is what we mentioned here, the AIS VDS constellations. That's a solution for the global coverage for the VOS to obtain more uh, meteor or oceanography data. So this is AIS constellations. We have right now around 400 satellites in the low Earth orbit. Now it's launched by different companies, Spire and, and so. So this is at the present time, we have something like this number. Okay, it's huge, huge, um, but it's AIS. So it's limited to the bandwidth, to two-way communication and so on. So we try to use the VDES system, so, but that needs a business model. So we check how this company, they earn money. They earn money by selling data, by selling data to uh, navigations, also to the, uh, to the people, in stakeholders, they want to check the economic situation in, in the main port in China, in LAX. So they check this, how frequent, what is the tonnage of these ships and vessels. Uh, so use that to infer the situation of economic activities. So these are the main reasons so they can earn money from that. Not only to sell the data, they are also trying to uh, do with the future unmanned vehicles. So they can, the vehicles in the future is unmanned. Okay, so they are also trying to do this. So in our communities, we require the VDES satellite communications, not only for, for VOS program, but also for any unmanned sensors, such as drifters and flows. So I will introduce you something uh, here is what is the, the flows and drifters. So they are tiny, tiny, smart platform that floating on the surface. They have IMU, inertial motion unit, to measure this altitude, the frequency of motions, use that information to infer the wave high and also the positioning data shows the current vector. And using some other algorithm, we can infer the wind speed, wind direction. There are also direct measurements for salinity and temperature and so on. So this is a kind of test that we do in the wave loom to make sure the data are consistent, good quality. So these are low cost, we can mass production uh, in the campus in National Central University. We can produce with low cost, hundreds of them, and deploy in East China Sea and the Pacific. So this shows one case. Uh, if you deploy in clusters, in array, so the data makes a difference. Not only single data, you can also use this data for a lot of... So if this is a cluster, you can see that the propagation of the colors and you can see many, many more uh, additional information on the ocean services. So we have direct measurement like uh, the sea surface, temperature, salinity, vector of current, wave spectrum, and statistic, and sea surface high like tsunami or tide. And also we use this information to infer the ocean mixing for pollutant, for oil spill, for to calculate upwelling or downwelling in vertical structures, the air moisture content using the Z, ZTD data, using GPS signal, and also the wind vectors. So they provide valuable information. So this is ongoing, what we have right now. But as you can see here, that these are the trajectory. If you spray them, they are passive. You cannot do anything more. So these are we call spaghetti diagram, spaghetti. So you can see this tide and also current all the way to Japan and also to South China Sea. But if we want to let them be here because there's approaching typhoon, we can do nothing. We are passive. So now we are doing the second stage is to equip a sail on those 
small buoys. So we know the sails, they have two, one big one with larger area, because you all know in fluid mechanics, the Bernoulli equation, the wind blow between these, when this higher velocity bring less pressure multiplied by the area, so this gives you a thrust, a force that moving forward. So this can move against the wind direction, not, not here, but by well control, if you know the wind, you know the altitude of the buoy, you can control the rudder and the sail. So you make them without any consumption of fuel, make them anywhere in the ocean. So this is kind of sail drifter that uh, using as a platform of the sensoring and then combined with AI robot control sail and rudder and all those things should be two-way communications. So the data could be transferred to the Central Weather Bureau or some Tokyo weather stations. And also you give them command to that location because we know there will be a typhoon. We want to be there in 10 days. So they slowly move there using this sail. So this achievement that makes this active deployment possible and to the any area of interest. And this is unlimited by the fuel because it's by wind. Okay, and you have, of course, you have solar panel to provide the basic running of the sensors. So we need this. It's a self-content because we already measure the wind vector, current vector, the IMU. This gives to here that control. And, and also this is the part we are missing. So this idea, is uh, we are trying to, we are working on. Uh, but last week, uh, no, last month, I found, oh, the NOAA, the NASA, they also accomplished one prototype already. <laughs> so we are late behind them. So this is their prototype. And so this is a Norwegian company in the Northern Europe. They are doing the similar things. Uh, they have do this across the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so this is the requirement. Um, I just try to share some recent progress with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, question, so you're saying AIS is inadequate in many ways. You need VDESH. So far, what VDESH experiments have you done and are you working with AI? Uh, no, we are working on AIS foundation, not VDEX now. Yeah, but we hope this VDES configuration could solve the current issue. I think the answer is yes. So please talk to Fuyo-san. <laughs> Thank you. Then we will move to the next talk and we'll have additional time for discussion later. Thank you, Professor Chen.